let's talk about XCPNG versus VMware, and we're going to bring up Proxmox as well. As people kind of come down to these choices a lot for their lab environments that they're setting up, whether it be at their home or at their business. In a lot of IT departments uh, in, or even IT companies like myself, we have labs set up because uh, we want to test out software, test out new products, and find out what works and what doesn't work. And especially for us, because we're staging sometimes or doing proof of concepts for a solution we may be deploying, these labs are very important. And a lot of home users, this is very accessible software because uh, the two products that I'm really talking about here, Proxmox and XCPNG, both fully GPL licensed, and you can download and have the whole full product suite for free. I'm going to compare them, though, to VMware ESXi because it's something that is huge in the market. Everyone's very familiar with it. If you're in the enterprise market, it's pretty much in most major companies. But it's not free. It is enterprise grade. It's a, not a bad product. It is expensive to license. They do have some free basic versions with some uh, limitations on it, and it's not open source. But if your goal or you're working towards a job, not as much worried about the lab, that you plan to be a VMware admin or, you know, we'll throw in Hyper-V if you're going into a, a job place and you want to get certifications for those, well, then you probably shouldn't be running XCPNG or Proxmox unless you want to do it on the side. Proxmox are able to run in corporate environments, but sometimes you have to get jobs in corporate environments where you don't get to make that decision. Uh, so, yeah, in that case... Just run whatever you plan to get certified in or job in so you can be familiar with it. That pushed aside, my business, we have chose XCP and G as what we want to run things on. I took a look at Proxmox. I like it, and I have nothing bad to say about Proxmox. It's just the way uh, we went with, and once you build everything on it, I don't know, you get lazy and don't want to necessarily move it all over, and I don't have a compelling reason to move it over. I think Proxmox is a good product. But let's talk about the features of them. And we're going to also at the same time throw in the features of VMware. Like I said, it's because a lot of people know it. And these folks at XCPNG made this handy little comparison chart because that's really who they see their competitor as. Uh, people already running the older Citrix version of this because this is Zen server. Then there was a Citrix version. Citrix made some poor decisions and uh, lost the market to the XCPNG, which is an open source and can be installed over the top of the Citrix version of Zen Server. And I believe Citrix has recently done some renaming as of here in April 2019. I'm not going to get into that. Now, when you're doing these comparisons, there's two columns over here and one here. And the reason why is because XCPNG is the base. Zen Orchestra is technically a separate product. Same developers are developing both products. And XCPNG does not itself have a web interface. XCPNG is a base command line driven when you start uh, VM hypervisor here. So it works much like other hypervisor, works like Procmox, but the web interface is set separate. Now there is a tool, it is a Windows based tool, and it allows you to manage it from a console. So there is ways to manage it. There is a GUI management tool. Uh, it doesn't work very well in Linux, but you can run that and you can run XCPNG without Zen Orchestra. The reason Zen Orchestra is a separate product as opposed to being integrated, and that's sometimes where people don't like Zen Server, is management. Now, I say management because, of course, yeah, we want to manage the web interface, but how you manage it at scale. Uh, I have some clients we've met through doing some consulting and through these videos, and Zen Orchestra offers a amazing ability to handle thousands of VMs across even hundreds of these XCPNG servers. And I say that because I have a client, for example, that their head office is in Chicago, but they have data centers in multiple locations. Zen Orchestra web interface runs independently at the Chicago, but then connects over VPN to all the XCPNG servers at the other data centers. Now, these XCPNG servers can be complete standalone, and then everything's orchestrated through one web interface as opposed to logging into each one individually. And Proxmox solves that by doing a cluster. So you cluster them together. But what Proxmox doesn't solve, if I have a cluster in Chicago and I have a cluster in Dallas, and there are two separate clusters, I'd have two separate web interfaces. The way XCPNG with Zen Orchestra works is Zen Orchestra loaded at one can add another cluster from the management side. Matter of fact, you can have multiple installs of Zen Orchestra at multiple locations managing multiple locations of XCPNG because it's pulling and writing back the config to each of these. And when it connects to them, it's also able to move the data back and forth between the 
nodes of XCP and G, even if they don't know each other. The only way they know each other is via Zen Orchestra. So it's a little bit of a different concept, but it scales to very large scale, uh, thousands of them. Had spent some time in the forums, you can see there's some very large companies running this and very large installs of this being run on XCP and G with Zen Orchestra. But they all have the same features once you get past that. Uh, basic VM admin, live VM migration, live VDA migration, high availability. We go down here, and this goes back to Proxmox. Proxmox has these features too. So when I say all of them, I do mean all the different ones we're talking about here. So Proxmox, XCP, and Gs, and Orchestra. Hyperconvergence solution, they have vSAN, they have XOSAN. XOSAN is an exception to the uh, fully open source part of it for some of their hyperconverge, I believe that is only a paid feature. So if you have a need for their XOSAN product, I'm not gonna get a detail on it. That is the exception to not being GPL. So everything XQP and G and Zen Orchestra is GPL, uh, Proxmox fully GPL, but that is a paid tool for any of that. Automatic updates, tool updates. Yes, you can do automatic updates and tool updates as well in here. So all, of, all those things are the same. Health checking, uh, ACLs and access control. Yes, once again, Zen Orchestra has a lot of those things. The scheduled tasks is really slick in Zen Orchestra. You can schedule VDI tasks. I don't think Proxmox has that as a feature in their web interface that I'm aware of, but it's all run on a Linux backend, a Debian backend, so you can still use Cron to schedule things. So it can be done, but there's certain things you may not find in the Proxmox. I'm not an expert on it. I'd actually defer over to Jay at Learn Linux TV. He has a series of tutorials on Proxmox, but it, that's kind of an edge case if you have like these, you know, scheduled tasks that you want to do. Now, basic backup, yes, they all support it. This is where Zen Orchestra really shines. Delta backup, file level restore, continuous replication, and load balancing. This is something that, yes, there's kind of a basic backup and restore, but when you get into the way it works in XCPNG with Zen Orchestra, you can actually create like a job with their backup system that continuously replicates that VDI to even another XCPNG server. So you can say every half hour, give me the Delta syncing just over to this other server. So you can have two VDIs that are at parity with each other based on that replication. That's actually a really nice feature. Uh, if you need that really granular level backups to do things and it can keep revisions of them. So you can actually go back and easily jump backwards and go, I just want to restore two hours ago VM because of something that happened or make some type of comparison. It happens very, very fast in Zen Orchestra uh, because of this continuous replication. And this continuous replication and Delta backups, because it's only syncing the deltas, you can create one large copy the first time, and you're only syncing the delta changes between the VDIs. This can be done over a lower bandwidth connection to have an offsite backup of your data. So it's not just exporting the whole VM or moving it around. It's just synchronizing that slight change for each one. Really slick feature for doing backups on there. I'm not as clear that Proxmox has that. I When I looked at it, that was one of the features I noticed. It just doesn't seem to have it. Can fully backup and restore VMs, but can't do that really slight granular restore of those. So that is where I'm going to lean towards XCP and G. And if I'm wrong, someone correct me, but I haven't seen that feature inside of there. Now, something where Proxmox really does shine is they have Ceph, FS, NFS, CFS, and Gluster uh, as other storage types in here. This does go above and beyond the storage availability that you find with XCPNG. XCPNG supports EXT3, LVM, EXT4, really kind of beta. I've seen some people setting up ZFS in there, but it's not, it is not natively supported. Um, so it's, but it's open source. You can obviously load packages and modify things if you wanted to go there, but that's not native support or there. That is an advantage that you can build this. Granted, it's ZFS on Debian, so there's that, which means it may not be the same as ZFS as far as features go that you'll find on FreeBSD, but it is available. But both Proxmox, VMware, and XCPNG all support iSCSI external storage. And in the case of us, we're using, we've used iSCSI on one server and another server using NFS, and they're both supported on all these platforms um, where you can take and export and use an external storage server, like I said, NFS or iSCSI, and be able to mount that as your storage repository for the nodes. So that is completely supported. A couple other notices that are supported in both of these. If you need the uh, Linux containers, the LXC containers, that's natively supported right in the menu for Proxmox. It's a little bit more complicated because you have to have a VM to host all the containers in XCPNG, and then it gets its integration. So it's not, 
at the XCPNG level, it's with any VM that you manage all the containers. So it's a slightly different of how it's done. The KVM hypervisor is what's used inside of Proxmox versus this is using the Zen hypervisor. <clears throat> there's some confusion that comes back and forth with this. And there's an article about the Amazon switching over and getting rid of uh, Zen as their core. They use a very custom version of Zen. They're looking at a very custom version, I believe, of the KVM, but they're split because the majority of the AWS infrastructure still runs in that. I see people share that article all the time because the headline makes it imply that they're completely switching. AWS, completely different animal, and they're not running basic tools like this. They are highly customized, so it's not really relevant to any of this discussion. But I bring it up because someone always mentions that it's going away or this is dying. Matter of fact, it, go to the forums. This is expanding because of the open source on here. Now, a couple other things here that I'll mention. Both these companies, both Proxmox and XCPNG, and we'll actually pull up the website here, xcpng.com, they both support uh, contracts. So you can go here, uh, you can get pricing, you can get your standard host, SSH support, six tickets per year, one business day response time, enterprise. Proxmox does the same thing. Both of these companies have a business model of their software is fully GPL, fully free, but if you would like to buy support, you can. And I really like this business model and I recommend buying support if it's something you need or uh, something you want to explore using in your enterprise environment for your business, you have support options out there. So I have a lot of videos on how to get started on XCPNG, but if you go, you know, I want that little bit of confidence that when I sell it to management that, hey, who's gonna be able to support this? The support comes from the people that wrote the software. They're wicked smart at this because they wrote it. And they said, you have the same thing with Proxmox if we go over here and they have subscription plans that you can buy, same concept. You get the software fully for free. They have a number of tickets you get depending on the different options you buy, but both of them have this as an option. So there's, there's not any trickery. You don't get a better version if you pay, you get the full version. Now Zen Orchestra is a little bit different. So this is XCPNG slash Zen Orchestra, but when you're getting Zen Orchestra, if you compile it from source, you're on your own, they sell subscriptions to Zen Orchestra as a supported product. So it's the same version. The only couple little, you get a couple things like the ExoSAN and things like that are some of the paid things that the the only thing that's missing from the, X, the code. But without ExoSAN, you can still connect it to other servers. You can still do pretty much all the things you need to do. It's just that specific ExoSAN module that's proprietary as of right now and not open source. So hopefully this helps a little. Like I said, it's it can be, Back and forth on the choices here. I went with XCPNG because I like it. I didn't, you know, but I don't have any problems with Proxmox. I think it's an excellent product. Uh, my friend who runs it, they they're using it within their business, and I've, I've talked to a few other people that are that have quite a few systems running on Proxmox, and they they sing its praises of how good it works. The same way I sing its praises of XCPNG. So there are two great products out there. I hopefully this helps a little bit with the choices, um, or maybe it hurts because you wanted me to really lean one or the other. Um, other than me being biased because I've been running XCPNG and promoting it for a while, I don't have any problem with Proxmox. Uh, but I also don't have, in case you're wondering. I don't have a comparison of speed between the two of them. One day I hope to do that when I find the time, take a server, run a series of tests on it, running Proxmox, wipe the server, run a series of tests on it, run XCPNG, and see which one's faster. I am curious about that. Uh, any video I found or information on this seems a little old or dated, and obviously with each iteration, especially if it's been a couple of years, there's been major kernel updates and major changes to both of these products over the years. So anything done even a year ago compared to now might not be all that uh, informative or accurate because both these companies are very active on all their updates and very active on all support because, well, hyper, uh, all this virtualization is huge. It's, it's how a lot of these things run, virtualization, granted founded by the folks of VMware, but really it, in the open source world is being dominated by the XCPNG and uh, Proxmox world. Now, I do know that there's a couple of final mentions here that you can use uh, hype virtualization in, like manually, you can roll your own, you can load over, there's all kinds of other stuff. Like I said, it just goes on this beyond the scope of it. I know there's a whole lot of other things out there and I know Unraid supports it and uh, FreeNAS supports it but I don't feel as those are as developed as uh, some of these are right here. 
in terms of a full stack that works really well for doing it. All right, hopefully this helps uh, or hurts or um, helps at least inform you about these two products. And I'll leave links to these uh, data sheets and things that I found on here so you can look at them yourself, of course. And it's just their websites, xcpng.org and uh, Proxmox. So, all right, thanks. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to this channel to see more content, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, and maybe YouTube will send you a notice when we post. If you want to hire us for a project that you've seen or discussed in this video, head over to lawrencesystems.com where we offer both uh, business IT services and consulting services and are excited to help you with whatever project you want to throw at us. Also, if you want to carry on the discussion further, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can keep the conversation going. And if you want to help the channel out in other ways, we offer affiliate links below which offer discounts for you and a small cut for us that does help fund this channel. And once again, thanks again for watching this video and see you on next time.